Now that EDIUS X is out, you may have noticed that there are several third-party audio and video plugins included with the program. This tutorial will be covering the Acon Audio EE or EDIUS Edition plugins. I'll be demonstrating the Digital Compress, Digital Denoise, Digital Diverberate, and Digital Limit plugins. When thinking about this tutorial, I had to consider how EDIUS users would utilize these plugins. I came to the conclusion that voiceovers, any recorded voices, and sound captured at events such as weddings would be the primary targets on which to use these plugins. So, with all that said, let's take a look at the plugin interfaces. When opening each of the interfaces, they are very easy to interpret and use. You will also notice that the interface headers are consistent among the four plugins. Moving on to the plugins, I've added a raw voiceover audio track to the timeline and applied the Acon Compress plugin. First off, this plugin is a compressor and not a compressor limiter combination. What does a compressor actually do? Well, a compressor manipulates the dynamic range of a recording. This means the loudest and quietest sounds are adjusted so that they are more in balance with each other. By decreasing the higher volume signals and then raising the overall volume, the resulting audio file will have fewer peaks and valleys. Keep in mind that overcorrecting the dynamic range can take the life out of an instrument or voice. With that background, let's go over the Compress EE's interface starting in the upper left corner. To make it easy, the interface function buttons are the same across all of the plugins. The tab label program is a fixed label. Next to it is a tab with a drop down arrow that has a list of presets. If all you are doing is applying a preset or a preset you created, and you will not be making changes, this drop down list would be the fastest option. In the center of the plugin, you will see the main function button. It is flanked by back and forward arrows that can cycle through the options. The same presets from the tab drop down are seen here as well. Along with this are options for saving or importing presets. If you make a setting and you want to save it as a preset, simply click the preset tab and under import export, click save user preset file. You will be sent to the preset storage file location. Label it and save it. To import a preset, simply click load user preset file and you will be sent to the presets location. Double click the file to import the preset into the plugin. To remove a saved preset, it is best to navigate to the app data roaming Acon digital folder and select the plugin in which the preset is saved. If you know a keyword for a preset, simply click the search icon and type in the keyword. For example, type in gentle. To the right of the preset tab, you will see the undo and redo arrows. Then you come to the A, B comparison buttons. To use this, choose a setting for A. Now click B and choose a different setting. Press play and toggle between the A and B settings to compare the two options. The boy was there when the sun rose. A rod is used to catch pink salmon. The source of the huge river is the clear spring. Kick the ball straight and follow through. The final button is for the interface settings. The first option is for the language, and the second option is the about page. Now let's go over the manual settings. Looking at the interface, we have five sliders. The first is the threshold level. 
This slider sets the point at which the compressor begins working. Next, we have the ratio slider. This determines how much the volume is reduced. The higher the ratio, the more aggressive the compression. Moving on to the attack time slider. Sound shaping is all in the attack and release timings. Fast attack settings tightens up, adds control, and gives a more processed sound. Slower attack settings give more impact and punchiness and a more transparent sound. When possible, use slower attack speeds. The release time slider is for shaping the sustain of an instrument or mic. Slow release times are good for smoothing out dynamics and fast release times are used for increasing the perceived loudness. Using attack or release time settings incorrectly will certainly destroy a mix. The final slider is for compensating for output levels that have been reduced by compression. My voiceover file was recorded in a room with a computer, a ceiling fan running wide open, and some air conditioner noise. Computer noise and ceiling fan noise is probably two of the top issues when doing voiceovers. To combat noise, this compressor also has a three-level gate. I find that minus 24 dB setting very useful in reducing ceiling fan noise and also providing a punchy voiceover. Notice that the meters are off in the quiet sections of this playback. The boy was there when the sun rose. A rod is used to catch pink salmon. Using a gate can be tricky. Too much gate and you can cut off your S sounds or any sound below that cutoff point. Here is a section without the gate. The boy was there when the sun rose. A rod is used to catch pink salmon. The source of the huge river is the clear spring. Here is the same section with the gate. The boy was there when the sun rose. A rod is used to catch pink salmon. The source of the huge river is the clear spring. As you can hear, my S sounds are reduced. To retrieve the S sounds, I created a gate preset that allows the S sounds to be heard. The boy was there when the sun rose. A rod is used to catch pink salmon. The source of the huge river is the clear spring. Fortunately, this setting brings back the S sounds and still allows the gate to work on the dead areas. There is still some noise left in these dead areas. The source of the huge river is the clear spring. Pick the ball straight. This noise can be further reduced by adding the noise reduction plugin. Another way of controlling computer and fan noise is by using the noise reduction plugin. When recording your voiceover, record about 10 seconds of room sound from the microphone. This will help in the reduction process. As you can see, the noise reduction function buttons are the same. The only difference is with the manual sliders. There are only two sliders, the reduction and maximum attenuation sliders. Reduction controls the amount of noise reduction and the maximum attenuation or sensitivity controls the range of what is considered noise. The higher this goes, the more the actual audio will be affected. When applying the noise reduction filter, a large part of the fan noise can be reduced. The boy was there when the sun rose. A rod is used to catch pink salmon. The source of the huge river is the clear spring. On this track, the noise reduction works great and could be used as is. By adding one of the fan reduction presets along with the compress EE filter with a gate, you can produce the optimal result. The boy was there when the sun rose. 
A rod is used to catch pink salmon. The source of the huge river is the clear spring. The gate kills the noise in the empty spaces, and the noise is reduced considerably during the talking areas. At this point, you should see that it can take more than one filter to resolve an issue. Don't expect an all-in-one fix. Even plugins that do multiple functions need help at times. In the next section, I'll show you how to reduce echo in a church using the Diverberate plugin. As you can see, the Diverberate plugin looks similar to the Denoise plugin. There are two sliders in this plugin the reverb time and reverb level. Reverb time is the duration of the reverberation, the reverb level is the amount of reverb that is sent to the output. I figured that the best type of audio sample for this video would be from inside a large convention room or a church. As you can see, I have a wedding video clip on the timeline. The audio was captured into the main camera. The echo isn't horrible, but it is noticeable. Here is the raw church audio. As we gather in this place for this celebration that we witness here today the marriage of Jack and Theo. You can definitely hear the echo on playback. So let's just drop the Diverberate plugin onto the clip and hear what we get with the default setting. As we gather in this place for this celebration that we witness here today the marriage of Jack and the default setting produces a very good result on this clip. You can choke off even more of the echo by moving the reverb level slider to the right. Be careful not to deaden the audio and in the process add phasing as with this example. As we gather in this place for this celebration that we witness here today the marriage of Jack and Theo. A warm welcome to each and every one of you. Removing too much of the natural sounds could take much of the life out of the dialogue. On the reverb time slider, you will see a button that is labeled A. Pressing this will allow the reverb time to be automatically adjusted during playback. This will work in some cases, but not all. As we gather in this place for this celebration that we witness here today the marriage of Jack and Theo. A warm welcome to each and every one of you. Let's turn this off for now. In instances where there are other sounds going on in the background, you can remove or reduce them by adding the compressor with the gate and or the noise reduction plugin. In the case of this video, Using the noise reduction plugin will clean up some of the background and keep the audio very transparent. When the file is played back, you can see that the output volume is still below 0 dB. As we gather in this place for this celebration that we witness here today the marriage of Jack and Theo. A warm welcome to each and every one of you. Seeing that the meters were below 0 dB and in need of raising, we move on to the limiter plugin. Let's look at our final plugin, the Limit EE. First off, what is a limiter? Similar to compressors, limiters are designed specifically to prevent audio signal levels from going higher than a set threshold point. Compressors reduce the signal after it has reached a threshold whereas a limiter stops it from crossing the threshold. Looking at the interface, the Limit EE plugin once again has the same function earmarks as the previous plugins. This plugin has three sliders, the input level, the output level, and the release time. The input level is the amount of gain going into the limiter. The more gain, the more gain reduction, and the louder your result will be. 
The output level is the threshold setting that your signal will not cross. And the release time setting adjusts the speed at which the limiting is applied. After applying the limiter, I'll be using the volume boost medium setting. This provides a minus 0 0.50 output level, which puts us just below 0 dB. As we gather in this place for this celebration that we witness here today, the marriage of Jack and Phil, a warm welcome to each and every one of you. If the sound needs to be livened up a bit, you can add a little to the reverb level in the Diverberate plugin by moving the slider to the left. As we gather in this place for this celebration, that we witness here today the marriage of Jack and Theo. A warm welcome to each and every one of you. Returning to the voiceover file, with the compressor and noise reducer applied, we can hear that it is quiet in the dead spaces and see that the levels are bouncing between minus 6 dB and plus 5 dB. The boy was there when the sun rose. A rod is used to catch pink salmon. The source of the huge river is the clear spring. After applying the limiter and selecting the volume boost medium preset, the volume will be near 0 dB and the voice over volume will be leveled. The boy was there when the sun rose. A rod is used to catch pink salmon. The source of the huge river is the clear spring. Take note of the meters. Even with the use of the volume boost medium preset, the noise levels are still pretty much non-existent. This is due to the three plugins applied to this track. The boy was there when the sun rose. A rod is used to catch pink salmon. The source of the huge river is the clear spring. Akon updated the program as I was finishing the tutorial. What was added was four more drop downs that have the individual presets for that particular plugin. You can now drag and drop a specific preset onto a track without opening the main interface first. To make this easier to use, you can create a new Acon subfolder and place all of the full plugins into it. This will provide you with a drop down arrow. The drop down arrow will give you individual control over each section. Once you become familiar with the presets, having the ability to grab the exact preset or even a saved preset will speed up your process. All in all, the four Acom plugins do an excellent job with Enedius. They are especially effective on voiceover recordings where computer and overhead fan noises are problematic. These plugins are easy to use and don't require you to be a rocket scientist to use them. If you've never used compressors, limiters, or noise reduction plugins, these plugins will provide you with the opportunity to learn about sound shaping. Don't be afraid to experiment with your sound. That's how you learn. I would strongly recommend doing a few Google searches for compressor and limiter training. There are many YouTube videos that will help you to get better quality mixes. If you are interested in other Acon plugins, go to acondigital.com.